Hey, it is so great to hear. It's so wonderful. And I, I know when I've asked Bob about things that are going on with the Godmobile, and I've been involved with them a little bit and seeing what they've done, I have to pull things out of them all the time. I don't know if he tells you fully what's going on there, but it's a phenomenal full gospel businessman fellowship intervention has done through this Godmobile. They've led thousands and thousands and thousands of people, mostly the majority of them young people, children, youth, young adults, to the Lord. Last year alone, they led over 1,500 people to the Lord. 1,500 people. I mean, that's just a great thing. Bob goes, I don't care about the numbers. Well, God does, because he loves every one of those numbers. And I was at the Godmobile here in Cumming, the 4th of July, and Kim and Taylor came up. You could tell Kim had had a rough life. Woman in her 40s, maybe. And, and, and she, just wore, she just wore it. And her son was with her, Taylor. Taylor said, I've been an alcoholic for 12 years. He says, I've been a drug addict. I haven't been able to get my life together. The kid was probably 28 years old. And he accepted the Lord because of what you guys did. Because of all that you pour in and sponsor and help and partner with guys that God will do. And to see that kind of transformation in life is just phenomenal. It's just so great. So I want to start out with just us worshiping God. You know, when we worship God... It's amazing because not only is God glorified, which is the reason we worship him, but that light shines back down to earth and magnifies him on the earth. And when we worship, it moves, moves heaven and transforms the earth. And I, and I just love it. You know, worship is a weapon. It, it's spiritual warfare. You talk about spiritual warfare. The only thing that really changes things here on earth is the presence of God from heaven. And that's why we pray, let your kingdom come. So when the rule and reign of God comes to the earth, it changes things. So worship does that. And it's spiritual warfare. If you think about that with Gideon, what did Gideon do? They just shouted. And what happened? The enemy went into confusion. And I think this is a time where God is bringing order out of all the chaos that's going on around us. That's why he sent us here. He sent us to bring his order and his kingdom's perfect order. And he's not the author of confusion or chaos. But we're seeing so much confusion and chaos around us. That's why when we worship God, we bring that order. When we serve God, we bring that order. When we witness to people and bring them into the kingdom, we bring order to the chaos that the enemy's doing. But not only does it do that, it brings chaos to the enemy camp. Amen. When you think about that, what happened? You know, when Jehoshaphat said, what do we do? We don't know what to do. All these armies are coming against us. The Amorites, the Hittites, the Mosquito Bites, they're all coming against us. What do we do? And he said, well, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And God gave us, God gave him the strategy. He said, send the musicians out in front of the army. He knew that musicians were expendable, so that was understandable. <laughs> but, but he said, when the people worship, what happened? The enemy was sent in confusion, and they destroyed each other. Same thing happened with Paul and Silas as they worshiped in the prison in Philippi. They worshipped and the chains came loose, the prison doors came open, and the people came out and said, what must I do to be saved? One of my favorite verses, and I'll, I'll tell you why this is one of my favorite verses, is when David says, praise the Lord, O my soul. I love the version that says, praise the Lord, I tell myself. So his spirit is rising up within him, telling his soul to praise the Lord. And he says, praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits who forgives all my iniquities and heals all my diseases. So when we worship God, it brings his healing power, his manifestation power, his forgiveness here on earth. So let's, let's sing this. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, and worship your soul.
says that the enemy, the God of this age, is blinded unbelievers so they can't see it. So when we pray, as we pray for people, our prayer lately so much has been what Paul would pray for people. He said, God, open their eyes. They're blinded by the enemy. Open their eyes. And that's so much of what we do. And when Paul prayed that, he said, what, what do I want you to see? I want you to see the hope that you're called to. What's the hope? Our only hope is Jesus. And our incomparably great riches for those who believe. Well, what do we get when we believe? We get an inheritance from God, and we are the inheritance of God. So we get Jesus and God. And then he said this, I want you to know the incomparably great power that you have. That same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is working in you. I want you to know that you have that same power. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. So Paul is pr pretty much praying. I want you to have the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the problem is so much of our church now is Father, Son, and what's his name? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? We need it. And Paul understood that. We need the fullness of the Holy Spirit. I'm so grateful that when I was saved, that I had friends that introduced me to the Holy Spirit. It was so great. I mean, I had, just like all of you, I had amazing circumstances surrounding my salvation. I was kind of a new age guy. I had studied everything. And then when I started studying Christianity, I realized... Wow, of all these religions that I study, Christianity is the only one that even makes sense. Yeah. Amen. So that witness of the Holy Spirit in me made me realize, wait a minute, nothing else explains the condition of mankind, the creation of mankind, what we need to do, what, we're, what burns in us to know God. And I'm so grateful. I was with, with a group called the Fellowship of Christian Musicians down in Orlando where I was living at the time. And some of my friends there were Catholic evangelists. Is that an oxymoron? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they were Catholic evangelists. And I was with them in my recording studio one day, and they said, hey, you know what? God wants to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. I go, good. What's that? <laughs> and they said, no, he wants you to have the fullness of the Spirit. I said, good. What do I do? And they said, you're going to be speaking in tongues. This is going to be great. So they prayed for me. And, and it was like I was Catholic. I was like, mm -hmm. okay. I just sat there. Nothing happened. I'm going, okay, well. I would like this too, but that's great. Thank you for praying for me. That's really, really nice. About two or three days later, I was within with a, in our studio with a guy who's one of my best friends now, and we were recording some music because these guys at SeaWorld, where my wife and I worked in Orlando, we did music there, and all the skiers from Orlando were from the Assembly of God Church. Uh, a bunch of the people in the recording studio were, were all Christians, and it was amazing. God, did, Have you ever noticed that when God wants to get a hold of you, he'll surround you? You can't get away. He'll surround you. His arm is so long, it reaches into every area of your life. So we have all these witnesses. So two or three days after my Catholic evangelist friends prayed for me, my friend said, hey, I think God's doing something in you. I said, what is it? And he goes, I don't know. Just start praying. And I started praying. Wow. And I haven't stopped praying until since. Go, God. 
And I noticed significantly, and I, I was doing some, like, I think we were doing some juvenile detention center ministry. My wife and I were leading some worship for some Jesus festivals at the time. Y'all remember Jesus festivals? We were doing that for a while. But I noticed the significant jump in the power and the anointing of what was happening when I got baptized in the Spirit. It was amazing. From that time, I haven't looked back. And one day, I'm going to grow up. <laughs> and when I finally grow up, I'll realize it was the power of the Spirit. That everything happens by the power of the Spirit. And I was so, so grateful. But I want to tell you more about... Uh, my, my story has got a little bit of interest, but what God did in the last few years with me is, is amazing. Because actually, it's, it's so good to be here. It's actually good to be anywhere. You know, considering what we've all gone through in the last two or three years... And, and right now, I've just been saying over and over again, you know, I think I'm playing with house money. You know, so many people, and I know many of you in this room have lost loved ones, friends. It's hard. It's hard to go on, but for some reason, God has sustained us. He's brought us to this point, and what's it for? It's for His glory, and that we still have an assignment here and a mission on earth. So things have certainly been upside down. You know, we, we've all had to rethink and to think, with Pastor and I were talking, and we've had to rethink our churches. We've had to rethink how we do church. This Wednesday Warrior meeting now that we do, we do it as a hybrid meeting. Some of the guys are in a room at one of the churches here uh, in Atlanta, and some of the guys are on Zoom. It's just like completely rethink and reconsider and reorient our lives. But there's one thing that stays steady through all of that, that God is still moving. He's still on the throne. And he's still changing our perspectives daily to meet the needs that we see around us. And so I think we have to be open to that perspective, like the guy in this letter. He wrote this letter. He said, Dear Marty, I've been unable to sleep since I broke off your engagement to my daughter. Will you forgive me? He says, it, I was much too sensitive about, sensitive about your mohawk, your tattoos, and your pierced nose. I now realize motorcycles aren't all that dangerous. And I really shouldn't have reacted to the fact that you've never held a job. <laughs> I'm also completely sure that some other very nice people live with you under the bridge in the park, too. Sure, my daughter's only 18 and wants to marry you instead of going to Harvard on a full scholarship. But after all, you can't learn everything about life from books, can you? I sometimes forget how backward I can be. I was so wrong. I was a fool. I've now come to my senses, and you have my full blessing to marry my daughter. Sincerely, your future father-in-law. P.S. Congratulations on winning the lottery. <laughs> you know, changing circumstances certainly change our perspective. You know, I have a completely perspective, a different perspective than I had four or five years ago. It's not that I didn't see things from God's perspective, but God allows us to go through stuff. And, and God doesn't cause things. The enemy is here to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. God comes to bring life and abundance, but God will never waste a hurt. He'll never waste a circumstance right. to allow us to comfort those with the comfort we receive. Mm -hmm. To allow us to minister to those with the ministry we've received from God and others. In October 2018, I had a perspective change. I had a CT scan for an issue that turned out to be just fine. That was the good news. The bad news was that the scan revealed that I had a significant increase in the size of my lymph nodes. And so the doctor said, okay, we're going to just consider this lymphoma. And I said, oh, no, no. And the biopsy confirmed I had follicular lymphoma. So my doctor sent me to an oncologist. And, and the oncologist says, oh, those encouraging things that doctors say, oh, this is incurable. Yeah. Oh, you love that? Mm -hmm. You know, every report we hear, we have to realize what's the fact and what's the truth. The right. fact was, I wasn't denying, Kenneth Hagin used to teach us, I wasn't denying the fact. I'm not saying, oh, no, your machines read it wrong. I wasn't denying the fact, but I was saying, that's just fact. The truth is, yes. I have the healing power of God in me. Amen. So I was dramatically faced with living out what I believed and taught most of my life. I had to decide what I was going to do about this. So here's what I felt the Lord tell me to do. And this isn't a, a, a prescription or anything. This is just a description of 
what I felt God tell me to do. And I think it holds a lot of them. It's not a formula, but first of all, God says, I want you to continue to worship with thanksgiving. Psalm 103, 2 says, Praise the Lord, O my soul. We just read it. And forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. He says, I want you to start thanking me for the healing. And if I wasn't strong enough to do that, Ed right here would say, Joel, thank God for your healing. And I said, yes, Ed, thank you. And I had faithful brothers around me, faithful people around me. who would say, no, we believe you for this. Exodus 23, 25 says, worship the Lord your God. And his blessing will be on your food and water. I will take away sickness from you. So God says, worship is one of the keys to your healing. One of my favorite Bible stories is the one I told about the Second Chronicles. When they worshiped. The enemy was defeated. And then God said, now when, when you're worshiping, and as you worship, I want you to meditate on Scripture. You know, meditation's been stolen. I, was, I used to be new-agey kind of. You know, 